Okay, on page four, uh, example four, I'm going to use implicit differentiation to find the derivative. And in this case, we actually have two parts. We want to find dy dx. And if you notice here, you definitely cannot get y all by itself. So what we'll do is we'll take the derivative of both sides. And if you notice on both sides, we're going to have to use the product rule. So I'm going to label this number one and this number two because I'm going to do my little tables over here. So I'll make my table here for the first one. We're going to say for this one right here that f is equal to x cubed. And then g would be equal to cosine of y squared. We're going to have to use a chain rule for that. So f prime is equal to 3x squared, essentially dx dx, but I don't need to write dx dx. g prime is going to be, let's see, when I take the derivative of cosine, it becomes negative sine of y squared, and then the derivative of this is <clears throat> 2y, so negative 2y dy dx because when you take the derivative of y, it's dy dx, and then sine of y squared. Okay, so let me talk about that one more time. Here, if I take the derivative of the outside, it's sine of y squared. Then when I take the derivative of the inside, with respect to x, it's, excuse me, it's negative sine y squared. Then when I take the derivative of this, it's 2y dy dx, so I just put the negative on the outside. Okay, so that's the first one, um, and that's this side. So I'll use that in just a second. And then I'm going to create my second one here so that I have all my pieces together. So this is for number two over here. And this one's a lot faster. No trig functions. So f is equal to 3x squared. g is equal to y to the fourth. f prime is 6x. g prime is 4y cubed dy dx. OK, so I have all my derivative pieces. Now I need to put everything together so that I can solve for dy dx the whole idea is these pieces are going to be inside um, when I take the derivative or put it all together and I have to isolate. So this is kind of a long problem. So over here I'm going to start by taking the derivative of the left side. So it's f prime times g. So we've got 3x squared. Move all the way over here. 3x squared times the cosine of y squared. Okay plus, uh, let me be careful, plus fg prime. So this is actually going to be minus. So it's minus, it's x cubed times this whole hot mess right here. So I'm going to put these two variables together. So 2x cubed y uh, dy dx. It actually doesn't really matter where that dy dx is because it's multiplication. Sine of y squared whew, is equal to this side. So it's f prime times g, so we've got 6xy to the fourth, uh, plus um, 12, because I'm multiplying these two together, 12x squared y cubed dy dx. Whew. Okay, so the whole idea here is that I need to um, get my dy dx's on one side, meaning I should probably move this whole term over here to make it positive and then move this over here. So anything that doesn't have a dy dx, you need to get on one side, uh, all the other terms on the other side. So on the left, I'm going to have 3x squared cosine y squared, and I'm moving this over, minus 6xy to the fourth is equal to, I'm adding this. So this is still here. And then I've got plus 2x cubed y dy dx sine of y squared. Okay, so on this side you notice we have two terms with the dy dx here. So what I want to do is factor out that dy dx. So when I factor out the dy dx, this is just going to stay 3x squared cosine y squared minus 6xy to the fourth is equal to factor out the dy dx and you're left with 12x squared y cubed plus 2x cubed y sine of y squared and now really I just want to move this over here so I can solve. Okay, So this is why it's important to be careful where your terms are and try to keep everything as organized and neat as possible. So we're solving for this dy dx 
is equal to, this is in the numerator, and then this is in the denominator. Okay, so again, as I said, our whole point is that we're going to be solving for the slope. So most likely at some point, this is just practice using implicit differentiation, but you would have an x value. Uh, you'd have to solve for your y value by plugging in and then finding the slope. These take a lot of practice, and you need to keep everything super neat.